Catherine Jamie Benizri is a lawyer at Legal Logic. We're going to talk about icy sidewalks, slips and falls. Thanks for joining us, Jamie. It's a pleasure to be here. The first question is, does she have a case? And so the first thing that we want to do in these kinds of scenarios, it's not uncommon for the fall to happen on the cusp either a city property or on the property, a private property line. So, and I've seen cases go all the way to the end and the judge rule in favor of the city because the slip happened on a private property, either on the, 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 the steps, driveway, yeah. the step, and in which case, you know, you really need to be careful who you're suing and really qualify the situation. That's, that's step one for me. Obviously, you need to have evidence if you're going to go to court. This is a unique case because, as you can see, the neighbor had that Nest camera. It caught the fall. How much does it help uh, her, her case here? So this is amazing. I mean, any, this is the lawyer's dream to have, to have somebody yeah. filming kind of in the, in the bushes yeah. or the neighbor in this case. So this is, this is amazing for her to be able to recreate the situation. Um, so that's for me, is a, is a huge piece of evidence. And really the next step is to, you know, qualifying the situation, looking at the situation as it was at the moment of the fall. Mm -hmm. She says in that story that she contacted the city beforehand, nothing was done. Is that another piece of evidence in her favor? So the fact that we have somebody you know, she's angry, obviously, but the fact that we have somebody who's actually taking proactive steps to notify the city that there's no abrasives, there's no salt, sand, or anything else is huge because at that point, you know, you can't ignore the state of the side streets at this point. What does the law say about personal responsibility here? You know, whether it's footwear, whether it's just looking where you're going, yeah. whether it's being careful, what's the law say? Okay, that, that's a good question. So, obviously, uh, somebody's responsibility is going to be very different or their diligence is going to be very different if you're wearing a nice Canadian winter boot versus, you know, some, some Jimmy Shoe pumps. Uh, yeah. So it's very different in both cases. So obviously there is a certain burden, a certain responsibility of the reasonable winter wear of, of, of uh, shoe, uh, shoes. Was she running for a bus? Was she casually strolling? Also an important factor. Uh, one other piece of evidence here. I don't know if it's evidence. You tell me. The city of Montreal, you know, J.F. Parenteau sent out a tweet. In the tweet, there's a bit of a mea culpa that, yes, the city should have reacted mm -hmm. and done something a little bit earlier. Can, can you bring that to court and say, hey, city tweeted they should have done something differently? As a lawyer, I would definitely bring that up. <laughs> yeah. I, I would definitely want to call him in, uh, prod him a little bit more, and kind of pick on that declaration. That's a pretty big declaration. Um, but in this case, you know, I feel, I feel for, the, uh, for the victim, and I, you know, I hope she makes a full recovery. She's angry. She's already wearing her, you know, her, her emotions on her sleeve, saying she's going to sue. Uh, the victim also saying, uh, you know, I'm going to sue them after I get through this first. Yeah. Is, is there some time restrictions here? Is there a deadline here? Does she need to act actually faster than perhaps she gets out of the hospital? So obviously, look, because we're dealing, we're, we're dealing with, with damage to, to one's body, you know, the whole 15 days is... Uh, yeah, that's the that number we see. You know, it's, about, right? that's, that's going to be for, you know, if you break your laptop as you fall back. If you break, if there's damage huh. to goods, when it comes to bodily injury, not necessarily the same, the same burden in terms of notice period. Okay. Uh, but in this case, and I think she's even recognized that it's going to, you know, the legal process is going to, is going to take uh, a while. So, you know, my, my advice to anyone, you know, the victim or anyone else in that situation, document the missed days, document the, phys the physiotherapy, document, uh -huh. uh, you know, if, if a loved one has to take off work and contribute to your well-being and to your recovery, that should be documented as well. What are the chances here? Do you have any stats or numbers about the number of cases that actually end up in Quebec courts and the number that are actually won? So I think that the stats that we have are probably skewed. There's a lot of people that take a nasty fall, will spend an afternoon in bed, and will go back to work the next mm -hmm. day who will just kind of, you know, dust off their arm and go back to work. So I don't necessarily know if the stats are, um, are, are reliable in that sense, but the stats that we do have has an average payout of about $16,000 wow. per person. Yeah. We've had cases over the last few years of judges awarding up to $132,000 in certain cases. Yeah. So the payouts are significant. Obviously, this is coming out of our pockets. We know where the money's That's coming. right. The taxpayers got to pay for this. We know where the money's coming from. Yeah. But in any event, um, we, have a, we have a responsibility to make sure that people are safe on our streets. Jamie Benizri from Legal Logic. Go check out their website, by the way, because the blog you posted about this very topic last year, very, very informative. Thank Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.